Sega. Hello and welcome back to Total War Shogun 2's multiplayer tutorial, part 2. This is of course the sequel to the massively successful Shogun Total War multiplayer tutorial, part 1. Right, now we're having a look again at the avatar I created in the first video. This avatar is of course a verdant green colour, in line with my theme. And of course I've set him up quite well from my previous adventurings. What we're going to have a look at now is the retainer system. Retainers are like cards that you play at the beginning of every battle. Retainers give bonuses to your forces and troops, or of course, negatives to the enemy armies that you'll face. You'll see that we've unlocked two retainer slots by virtue of having a low-level avatar. As we rank up, we'll unlock more slots. For now, we've chosen these two retainers to play in our next battle. In addition, we've gained a veteran unit, a unit that's been with us through thick and thin and has gained skill points as a result. You'll see here that we've got the ability to unlock a few of the new attributes at the top. We're going to go ahead and go for Bow Damage, thereby creating a little bit more anarchy with the bows that we send. We can also actually customise this veteran unit, colouring him and changing his hue and contrast and colours in order to make him fit a little bit better both with our sofa and with our army. So you can see here our personally named, personally coloured Bow Ashigaru unit, a veteran of many battles on our behalf too, who is now much better placed to play with us. Now, the next province we're going to go for on the online campaign map will be in order to unlock one of the retainers that we saw earlier. So we're going to go ahead and try and attack this province down in the southeast. Now we're picking and selecting our army. You'll notice here we're going to go for a fairly mixed army, including our veteran unit. Here you can see the unit stats on the right, and of course our veteran has slightly increased bow damage as a result of his unlock. We're also going to include a few of our Yari Samurai, the unit we unlocked in our last battle, and again, a quick look at their statistics against their Ashigaru brethren show that they are slightly superior. We're going to save this army loadout because it looks pretty good and pretty balanced, meaning we can load it quickly again later on, and now join an online battle to try and win the province that we want. Here we are in the online battle. You can see my army right here, ready to go, my retainers ready to play, and of course, therefore, we begin. Bola! Ya! Yeah! Here we are, counting down. And into the online battle. Now, we move my veteran archers into a very good position. Using my superior bow damage and from a good position, we rain death onto the enemy. You can see they panic and begin to flee, but they counter with a horse charge, and I employ my Yari Samurai, experts against cavalry, and cut them to pieces with a cavalry charge of my own. This, followed by a few deft subsequent manoeuvres, results in a decisive victory and my opponent's head on a plate. You'll see that by winning that battle, we've gone up a rank with our general. We've also created a veteran unit of Yari Ashigaru, which we are naming now. And of course, we've unlocked various bonuses, including the retainer that we wanted earlier on the map. Here are the unit statistics following the battle. This shows us that our Yari Ashigaru unit did just enough to gain his next rank, and we can now go ahead and turn him into a veteran, just as we did with the archers. So here we are, back on the online campaign world, with a couple of provinces under our control. And allow me to tell you, friends, this is not it. Because... BOOM! Here we have the multicolored Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat of the Clan Competition online map world. Here you can see that we have a variety of different colours, denoted of course all the different clans. But first, we need to join a clan. On the left hand side you can see the number of steam groups we already belong to. Steam groups are clans in Shogun 2. And on the right you can see all of the publicly accessible steam groups, or clans, that we can become a part of. Now we're going to go ahead and obviously join the clan for the steam group that we're already in. Here you can see our players and of course our activities on the right hand side. Back onto that online colourful rainbow map. There are 24 clans per division of the online world and the divisions are arranged in a pyramid. A season lasts approximately two weeks. The top two clans in any division are promoted and the bottom four are relegated at the end of every season. And of course, you'll want to go ahead and make sure the top of the crop is you. All of these lovely pink bits signify territory that we have gained. We're ranked according to the number of regions that we control. You can see that as the right-hand number next to our clan's name. 
The regions are taken over by various different clans by having the highest clan influence score on that region, i.e. by fighting and winning battles, or in other cases, by holding lots of adjacent territories surrounding that region. All of these things create an influence. You'll notice that by mousing over a territory, we bring up a tooltip. The tooltip tells us who currently controls the province, the next nearest contenders fighting for control of it, and how much influence our clan has in that province. Again, our influence indicates whether or not we control it, and the number of provinces we control ranks us on the leaderboard. It also shows us how much influence we stand to gain from a victory there. And this is, of course, what we're looking at for the province that we might seek to attack. Various other modifiers also apply. Controlling adjacent provinces, for example, will allow us to capture and greatly increase the clan influence we earn for a victory. And this is the province we'd most likely want to capture to keep all of our regions together and keep that clan influence high and the number of regions we hold also nice and high. We encircle it so it looks like it's a good place to go for. But we're going to go ahead and allow our clan leader to choose this one. As a lowly member of the clan, we have to follow instruction, if we choose to, and help out the overall clan effort. So now we're going to wait and see what our leader selects. By placing this symbol on the map, the leader of a clan tells all the other clan members which region they should fight over and therefore gain influence in and eventually, hopefully, control. Our clan leaders picked the region that we thought he would, and so we're going to go ahead and attack the region we've been told to. Now, hopefully, a victory here, plus having influence by virtue of having all of the surrounding regions, will allow us to take control and therefore add a point to our rankings. Here you can see that by doing what the clan wants, we can also earn clan tokens that will allow us to upgrade our units. The ensuing battle is tense. We have to use all of our unlocked units and abilities. Spearmen, cavalry, archers, all of them are employed against our enemies. It's a bitter and tough battle, but after a pretty swift fight and the enemy routing, you can see we've taken control of this province. It's now colored a beautiful pink. Now, essentially, that's all that's left. We'll turn this world over to you. For wrath or for ruin, it's yours. Have fun! <laughs> <laughs>